welcome to today's railways walk on Old Carrickston. My name is Paul and I'll be leading you around some of the history of Carrickston today. Right, we just stand by you. Right, welcome everybody. Um, what a beautiful sunny day and welcome to Carrickston, uh, to Victoria Park. What we're going to do today, we're going to do a walk around Old Carrickston. Probably just before the turn of last century. Um, it's a lovely walk uh, with lots of history. Okay, so I'll just give you a quick introduction. In 1883, Carrickston Parish was on the threshold of momentous change. At that time, it was just a small agricultural village surrounded by open countryside. It was a self-contained community with a population of just under 300 people. 51 houses and a few farms. It con consisted of a school, a shop, a post office, a bakery, a smithy, a carpenter and butcher shop, a pub and three chapels. Carrickston was the largest of our three villages, the other two being Merthyr Devon and Barry. When Lord Windsor, the elder son of the Earl of Plymouth, and David Davis, the founder of Ocean Collieries, decided to construct a dock here, the effect on these three village, villages was unimaginable. For no other area in the United Kingdom would undergo a more remarkable change in short, such a short space of time. It gave ba both Barry and Carrickston universal fame. Barry Dock was built solely for the export of coal and was unique in South Wales because the dock's access led straight into deep water. It consisted of two main docks and a small basin. We are now standing only a stone's throw away from where once high tide came up to. Before the docks was built, Thomas Jenkins of Newhouse every morning would stroll over Caddy Common, as it was known, and then go for his daily swim in Western Square, which is just at the edge of the park, just at the back there. In 1894, the newly formed Barry Urban Council made recreation a major start in with the building of its parks. Named Victoria Park after Queen Victoria presented its boundaries in 1896. But the park as we see it today officially opened it to the public in 1909. As you are guided around today, I hope that you enjoy some of Carrickston's history. Are we all ready? Yep. Yes. Okay, let's go. like to, to point out if you look to your right just over by there you see a load of houses mm -hmm. yes um, well when the docks was being built they were the railway sidings okay and this um, I just want to, to, to notice uh, that because the story of the railway sidings will come up later on in the walk all right there'll be a part of, uh, uh, of, of something about the railway sidings there used to be a bridge going from just at the bottom of that road by there, right the way across to the other side. It was called the Penny Bridge. And it was knocked down, I think, in about the late 1970s. But a lot of people always remember the Penny Bridge. And it used to cross the railway sidings. The reason why they built the bridge, they built the railway sidings, um, but then the people couldn't cross from the other side 
to come here and they wanted to get to the Methodist Church on the far side. So they created uh, one hell of a mess, bit of a stink, <laughs> bit of a stink. And um, uh, so the railway uh, people uh, had to do something about it. So they built a bridge. And uh, one day some guy said, well, that must have cost you a pretty penny. So that's why they called it the Penny, the Penny Bridge. Penabryn, the house just by here. Um, it was a home to Thomas Eubank, who was born in Chap in the county of Westmoreland. He was appointed the first schoolmaster of Carrickson School in 1879, remaining in the post until his retirement in 1921. He was witness to the construction of Barry Docks and the growth of our town. His book, the first ever published in Barry in 1921, was called The Geography and History of Barry. It became and was intended to be a handbook of knowledge for local children. But it turned out to be a must-have book for any historian based on first-hand knowledge. His house is built in Shap granite stone, which he had brought from his birthplace in Westmoreland. Next door is number two Seaview Terrace. Tom Yeoman Tom lived here, a Carrickson school teacher, a local councillor, and former mayor of Barry Town, and also a Welsh international bowls player. And that's all I've got written on that, but what I would like to say about uh, Tom Yeoman, not just that I live in his house, <laughs> but actually he was the man that um, um, promoted all the sports fields within the town, where we have Maslin Park, uh, Buttrells, all of Barry Town. Uh, he promoted all the sports uh, field as he was a councillor uh, for Barry. And lastly, as we walk along by here, you will see St Oswald's Road. Wrongly named, it should have read Oswald Road, named after Oswald Evans, ironmonger in Main Street, who built the first house in the street. But somehow, a clerk in the town hall accidentally made him a saint. We have Caddickston School. As Caddickston increased in population with the influx of families, more and more school accommodation had to be provided. The first school on this site was built in 1879 to accommodate 72 children. Obviously, that was before the docks was built. It was enlarged in 1887 with a bell tower to cater for 241 pupils, re reflecting the rapid growth in the population. Now there's the bell tower behind you, and you can see a date just below the bell tower. It gives the date, 1887. But there was a school on that site before that one, of course, which Thomas Eubank uh, uh, was the headmaster. The school continued to expand with a substantial extension to the building on your right, dated 1895. And you can see the date up on the far side of the building. Local people would indebt it to the newly formed Barry School Board, which is in the writing on the middle of the building, for placing the whole of the Barry area at the forefront of all matters appertaining to the education at that time. As everything was done to ensure efficiency, health, cleanliness and comfort. Here we have Tom's Bricks. In the 1880s, very little was written about the building of the town, yet it was the fastest building programme ever undertaken in the United Kingdom. The main brick suppliers were the colliery owners, as brickworks were established at many of their collieries. 
home-produced bricks came from the Caddoxton Moors and were stamped either Biglis, New Dock, or Caddoxton, or the Globe. But apparently the most popular bricks were made just down the road here at Arkle Brickworks. Apparently they were the hardest. Now, here we have in this house here is Tom Clement, who is a local historian. And Tom's, one of Tom's hobbies was to collect a brick that was from everywhere that helped build Barry. So if you look at these bricks on the wall, they've all got names on them. This one is Arco Brickworks. Here we have um, Biglis, uh, Butcher, Dorton. I'm looking for the Globe, Newport, Brickworks. The globe. So all these were the bricks that helped build Barry. Church Road and it contains Welsh and English houses and they were built in 1891. Welsh houses have decorative acanthus above the windows, above the doors and the windows to keep evil away. The English ones are built of brick with nothing above the doors or windows. Notice some of the houses have boot scrapers by the front doors for workers at the brickworks. Later they were used by the milkman to put milk bottles in. Okay, here we have Crystal Springs. This area contained the lime kilns to burn the stone that was quarried in the area. It was later used as a depot to store bottled mineral, mineral water and it was called Crystal Springs. And here we have one of the bottles on Colbrook Road that was made at Crystal Springs. Opposite, if you look at that house there, that was the old schoolhouse. That's the, uh, the white plaster, the white brick building with a slate roof. And it was built in 1847 and was a church school. Its first headmistress was a Mrs. Greatrex, wife of the local butcher. This was the Golden Crust Bakery, the village bakery. Uh, it was built in 1876. Here we are, we're standing on Cassie Common. This was the site of the early settlers. This was the first village in Caddoxton, and this whole area is designated as a conservation area. Now, if you look around, you've got a very good view of actually what Caddoxton village was before the docks was built. Here we have Double Cot. It was built in, in 1790. It was actually a two thatched cottage. And here you can see the name Double Cot, meaning double cottage. It was a shooting lodge for the Wenville Estates. And the last people that used to live here were the Hookings family. Right, here we have the ancient parish church of St Caddock. Known as Caddock the Wise, he was a son of a local king and probably one of the most important of all the Celtic saints in the Vale of Glamorgan. He was born in the year 500 and founder of the celebrated monastery at Lancarvan. Just in front of you, 
you have the War Memorial. This was built on the foundations of a medieval cross. Notice the difference in fatalities between World War I and World War II. Okay, so it's on the memorial. So 1814, uh, 1914 to 1918, we had all those names there, on the side. and here, and on the side, and on the other side over there. <coughs> Between 1939 and 1945, there's 1939 to 1945, we only have these names. So I think there was 109, I think, on the First World War, and only a handful on the Second World War. The churchyard contains the graves of several well-known local families, including the gra grave of Thomas Eubank, which is over just by there. Um, George Palmer, Barry's own wizard, William Jenkins, who died in 1781. He became a wealthy landowner, farmer and money lender, and was the son of Anne Jenkins, the witch of Porth Kerry. Here we have U Tree House. This was home to the local artist, Maria Press. And if you notice in the wall just by here, there's a small gap. This is where the chickens used to come out onto the road. Just over by here, this large building here. In 1887, it was a private school for a girl's headmistress, Mrs. Barstow. So it was a girl's school. And she was the wife of a local butcher. Here we have the Colebrook River running through here. This was used for baptisms by the Philadelphia Baptist Chapel up until the beginning of the 20th century. And Evans the blacksmith shop was and used for making iron tires for wooden wheels. Here's one of the workmen that were standing just by there. Here we have Golden Grove. This was a res residence of William Jenkins, the wizard. This is where he lived. It was later home to Mr. T.A. Walker, the builder of the docks. This street is called Brock Street. And in 1841, when census began, Brock Street was the earliest recorded street name in Barry, named after the Brock family who moved here from Somerset in 1810. So this street is the first street that was named in Barry in 1841. And here we have the Bowers. In the 19th century, this was a farmhouse. Please notice the rave curb step. That's this one here. It was to enable ladies to raise their skirts above the muddy lane. Little Hill, which is the name of this lane, and Hillside, the name of this cottage. A date stone indicates it was built in 1776 and became a public house. And in 1778, William Jenkins was involved in an argument year which led to it undertaking a public penance in St. Carrick's Church. So this, believe it or not, is supposed to be the oldest, the oldest standing cottage in Carrickston. Here we have the King William IV Hotel Public House. It was built between 1830 and 1837 and once, once held dinners and celebrations. To the side of it, you have the Philadelphia Baptist Chapel and it was built in 1813. And if you look by here, you can see some of the gravestones in the back behind the gate. So that's where the Philadelphia Baptist Chapel was. Right here we have hillside cottages. This was home to the village store and a post office where in 1877 Mr Townsend, the appointed postman, made a daily journey 
on foot from Cardiff, calling at Ely, Wenvo and Urin Barry and the Barry Old Village, before returning the same way, collecting the mail, a daily distance, a walk of 12 miles. Here we have Hatch Cottage. Had a 19th century extension to include Hatch Farm. This is where we had the first butcher shop in Barry. It was demolished in 1932 to widen the road. There was also a bridge here to cross the river, hence the name Bridge Street. Across the road, we have Daisy Cottages, which is the white building there. This started li uh, life as a Welsh longhouse. The living quarters, number three, being the furthest end. It has a stone staircase and a fireplace to access to upstairs. The downstairs of the house was used to feed the animals. Opposite here, the large pipe sticking out of the ground it had a light situated at the top and it was built in 1890 <coughs> and was fed by methane gas from the sewers. So the pipe itself, as you see it, had a flame flying out of the top of it. Here, a large stone slab where bodies of people who were not born in the parish were placed to be removed to the parish where they were born. Paths from this place were known as lish paths. Here there were three, Merthyr Devon Church in that direction, Sully Church in that direction and St Andrew's Church which was in this direction. This lane that I'm standing on now, this was the main road to Carrickston's Council School and St Carrick's Church and the village of Carrickston. very important St Carrickston, which I'll explain a little bit later. Um, um, I hope you've enjoyed the journey. I think uh, it's a remarkable place. We've come to the end of uh, your guided tour of Old Carrickston. I hope you've all enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, it has been quite interesting and I love this area. But before I finish, there's one last thing that I'd like to mention and that's this house here. It's called Ayla Bryn and it was the home to Jimmy Wilde. And he was the first ever flyweight boxing champion of the world. Who is generally regarded as the best flyweight of all time. He was taught to fight by the legendary mountain fighter Di Davis while working in the mines. Unbeaten between 1916 and 1923, he was known as the Mighty Atom or the ghost with a hammer in his hand. He holds the longest recorded unbeaten streak in boxing history, having gone 104 fights with almost 100 knockouts without a defeat and that will probably be never be beaten but he lived in this house and he spent most of his time sitting on the bench in uh, Victoria Park yeah. now I'll take a stress pill